One of the first musical lessons every child is taught is usually how to distinguish one note, let's say a D, from another, a high G. However, what if I told you that our fundamental understanding of singular musical pitches is a drastic oversimplification? You see, when you hear a middle D, what you're actually hearing is the root note, as well as an infinite collection of overtones associated with this pitch. And what more is that these overtones are what make up the chordal harmonies to the root note. In this case, it's the specific yet infinite sound waves our brains have chosen to categorize as D. Now, besides this being a niche little party fact, what's the relevance to our daily lives? Turns out, creating a fulfilling life is a lot like building a chord. While there's only one root note, there are infinite harmonies needed to create a fuller sound. You see, to the world, each of our identities may be perceived as a single pitch. Some of us seem tinny and bright like a piccolo, and others low and mellow like an upright bass. In a culture that values specialization, it's easy to pass by on what creates death in both our music and our lives. Harmonies. Although a song is recognized by its melody, it relies on countless harmonies to create a memorable experience. Without them, music loses depth. And in failing to recognize our own parts as harmonies rather than individual tunes, we overlook the many layers of sound which make music the sensory experience it truly is. In the same vein, overtones and harmonics have the power to deepen our social connections, enrich our approach to mindful living, and allow us to reconnect with our deeply emotional and multifaceted human state. Now, what does that mean? Well, you see, no one expects two instruments, say a guitar and a trumpet, to sound the same when they sing the same note. However, we sometimes put unnecessary pressure on our peers to behave exactly like how we imagine ourselves to behave in a certain situation. We rejoice at Frank Sinatra classics and can have appreciation for new Taylor Swift hits at the same time. However, when it comes to finding a place to have dinner, we can't see eye to eye with the people who don't share our same tastes. When it comes to giving ourselves grace to find passions in multiple areas, we let it go for the more socially accepted path of specialization. You see, as a neuroscience and visual arts student, I feel the pressure to conform every single day. Why not just do Lord? Or just thank you on medicine. You're spreading yourself way too thin, they say, unaware of how I thrive at their intersection. Although increased mental health awareness has brought more attention to self-care in terms of living a balanced lifestyle, I'd actually like to suggest a slight shift in thinking by replacing the idea of balance with the idea of harmony. A frequent misconception is thinking that harmony and balance are the same thing when in reality the two concepts are vastly different. Balance is about moving in all directions to form a stalemate, while harmony is about harnessing those movements towards a single direction. And you see, our lives are in constant motion ebbing and flowing as we write our melodies through intentional thoughts and actions. So while harmonics sound great, one of the things that makes music truly enticing is dissonance. Unlike harmonies, dissonant pairings don't always seem to get along. And just like the challenges we face in our own lives, there are moments of clashing. Think of the time orientation week ended, and suddenly you found yourself alone. Think of the loss of your pet, your family, your friends, or even think about the loss of yourself. 
It's funny how dissonant pairings can often be only two notes apart. Almost in unison, but not quite. And you see, the two notes produce friction against each other. And it's awkward and uncomfortable and sometimes even overwhelming. Now, if you still have trouble thinking of time like this, I don't think anyone really needs an explanation for that one. So now running with this image in your mind, I want you to really feel and think about those awkward, awkward, very awkward hormones. Think about the friction of moods, opinions, and even the friction in developing a sense of self. I want you to reframe that thought so remember that feeling, but instead of being back in the moment, return as your future present self. I'm sure at least some parts of those integral yet foolish years make you chuckle. And just look at how far we've come. And then, of course, there are those rare moments or pearls of wisdom, I like to say. For me, it was one of my best teachers who told me that growth only occurs outside of your comfort zone. I want you to practice the hard sections of that etude, not the ones you already know. Turns out in music and in life, dissonance and personal growth are a package deal. So now what are we growing towards exactly? That's the next big question. You see, if we're stuck in our own musical parts, we are deaf to how we sound against other instruments in the orchestra. If we love our solo, but we hate when we play backup, or God forbid, rest for a few measures, then how can we love the dynamic, ongoing symphony of life? You see, everyone may have their own tune to play, but I urge each of you today to see how your part fits into the overall symphony. Most musicians will know that the beauty of not playing alone is that resting for a few measures does not make you any weaker than other musicians in the room. And to be quite frank, the audience won't even notice. So remember that the next time you're burnt out, thin on breath, and don't be shy to take that study break or go on that vacation, rest. I encourage everyone in the audience today, musician or not, to start embracing the symphony that is your life. As the conductor, have the agency to lead your orchestra mindfully. Next, embrace life's dissonances. They aren't always welcome in the moment, but will inevitably add depth to your set list. And finally, prioritize your melodies without forgetting to appreciate your harmony. Now, you don't need to implement all these at once, or even agree with me on every piece of advice I've given today. After all, not every song will use all these techniques at the same time. You see, all I really want to leave you with is this. With a little self-awareness, a flat melody, can become an orchestral masterpiece. Thank you.